I want to take you back a few years ago. I was in one of my real estate investment properties. I was scraping wallpaper. The air was dull and dusty. I had dirt in my hair. And I remember thinking, you know, is this my mission in life? Don't get me wrong. It provided very well. I had flexibility in my schedule, you know, doing my part for sustainability and the environment. But, you know, was this really the calling for my own existence? I actually had always imagined myself somewhere in the world of medicine and studying the mind because, you know, science and history, they're fascinating concepts to me. They always quench my thirst for understanding things I can't and don't see. But life happens, right? Choices are made, circumstances arise, and this is where I was. It's moments like this, moments of reflection, of silence that cause us to pause. These audits can be internally stimulated by you know, past goals and desires that haven't been met, or they can be external circumstances like traumas or a pandemic that force that shift in momentum. But these reflections can be integral to our success and happiness if they're bridled by action steps so that once that pause button is released, we don't just return to the same story. And if these static moments are so important, you know, why do we just go back to the same old routine? Do we just assume, hey, this is the life we've been dealt, it's the path we've been on forever, that's it? Well, I decided it wasn't. And so at the age of 37, I enrolled in college, wife, mom of three boys in high school, my real estate investment company. And this leap wasn't a small leap. Medical school meant many years of studying, physical and mental stamina. I didn't even know if I had. But once I made that choice, I had this calm, this peace that came about me, but also an excited you know, ambition to pace it in such a way that I could get there in the quickest route possible. I was 37. Fortunately, fortunately, responsibilities and relationships, they swiftly realigned that pace, but by a really unexpected um, acquaintance. You know, ambition towards success, it's commonly seen as a virtue in our society. But this virtue can transform itself into a vice of destruction if the balance of the extremes is not enacted. History seems like this far off story sometimes, not really applicable to us, but we can take some of those past concepts and apply them to a current situation and they actually can become pretty practical. In fact, Aristotle, one of the most well-known philosophers, personal favorite, in his ethics book too, he was on this quest to identify moral virtue, not so much by nature, but rather by you know, education and experience over time. And what he discovered was that man's inclination towards happiness and pleasure must be tasked with the ability to habituate the balance of these pursuits. So he gives examples of different occupations and arts each to their own, right? Because we find happiness in different things, but they all had some common end. For instance, in medicine, that'd be health. In house building, it'd be a house. And in another, it'd be something else. But in every one of these actions and choices, it's supposedly the end involved since it's for that reason we tend to do everything else. However, Aristotle believed that what we seek to do in the name of this happiness, it's oftentimes threatened by this instability of living between the extremes. So he dug a little deeper to find this true temptress of happiness. And it's this suffocating lack of grip to be able to pull oneself from one extreme to another. So he talks about an elite versus novice athlete. You know, they're both eating and training to perform. And those algorithmic numbers, they're going to be different for each one of them, right? Because an elite athlete's not going to eat and train the same way that a novice athlete would, but they both have a common goal to perform well. So the virtue in this situation then would be the ability to recognize, you know, which category does one belong and choose the appropriate middle ground so as not to be in deficiency or excess of training and nutrition. You can actually train too much and hurt yourself, and you can train too little and never get there. So Aristotle's relaying this message that it's actually more virtuous to possess both vice of excess and deficiency, to have that option to eat too little or too much, but the strength to withhold the temptation to succumb to one or the other. It depicts a man who realizes that his true happiness resides between the mean of his capabilities and his weaknesses, not just this uninterrupted journey in one direction at all costs. Unfortunately, this pleasure picture that Aristotle painted with his rationale and theory, it's constantly smeared by this idea that, you know, only certain people and only certain times can be successful and happy. You know, only if you didn't have it too bad or you don't have a past, only if you're lucky or maybe you haven't already made it too far up the chain. Well, taking these theories into account in my own mission, I'd like to talk to you about both my deficiency and excess mentalities and how they've affected my life. 
So in 2003, I was a young mom. Prior to having my kids, I was fairly athletic. So I never had to worry about working out. This baby body weight, foreign concept. So now I'm researching, you know, how to work out, how to eat healthy. I even started buying little things like these protein bars. I'm sure you guys have seen similar things in the store. And I remember one day my son asked me, he said, hey, can I have one of these for a snack? And I said, oh, no, honey, those are for mom. Those help mom lose weight. With a very sincere yet confused look on his face, he said, um, when are those going to start working? <laughs> I was like, uh, truth dagger. I had been saying I was doing things, but I really hadn't committed. So I did. I found this program. It was called Body for Life. 12-week program you took before pictures, followed the program, took after pictures, and then you wrote an essay about this transformation. And I did it. I took my before pictures. I followed it. I lost 32 pounds, went from a size 12 to a four, took my after pictures. I had this idea of what after pictures are supposed to look like, though, and I didn't look like them. I felt very defeated. My husband encouraged me. He said, go ahead and write the essay. So I did. And as I started writing, I noticed all the little excitements that I would have every time I lost another pound or when I would learn something new about my body and how, you know, weight loss affected me. And that's when I realized that was the success. That was the happiness, not the picture. So I submitted it. About a month and a half later, I get a call from the director of the program. He tells me, you've just won your age category along with $25,000. I couldn't believe it. But what I couldn't believe more is I almost let that deficient mindset stop me, right? I had this idea of what I was supposed to look like at a certain time, be my gauge. Fast forward to my wallpaper moment that I referenced at the beginning of the talk. I was enrolling in classes, researching medical school application processes, hadn't released any of my previous responsibilities. So the rigor was really starting to reveal itself. I was also trying to meet with different medical experts to kind of get their opinions on things. And one particular person who was the medical director of a professional sports team here in Kansas City agreed to meet with me. I was excited, shocked, you know, he'd be willing to talk, but it did not go quite as I had planned. After a few minutes of me kind of telling him what I was doing, my pace, my deadlines, my goals, he stopped me and he said, I've been where you're going at the rate that you're going. You have an opportunity to enjoy this journey. You know, don't rush so much in one direction that not only you, but others start to resent this noteworthy cause. Definitely, you know, continue pursuit of becoming a doctor, but not at all cost of people and time that you've committed to first. He summed it up by saying, sometimes regret shadow success when it's pursued at all costs. <sighs> stunned at this revelation. It's not what I wanted to hear, but I think it's exactly what Aristotle would have conjectured, right? My ambition and excitement for what I knew to be this next mission in my life could have easily become a vice of both, you know, efficient or deficiency and excess. I could have said, Hey, I'm 37. It is too late. This isn't what 37 year olds do. Or I could have said, I'm 37. I have to just get there as fast as I can and gone full force in one direction, not paying attention to who or what I had to step over to get there. And it's this imbalance that causes unhappiness, not the destination. The transparency of my story, it's just a carbon copy of an increasing number of college students and people in general. We're just overwhelmed by this rat race to excel, this conveyor belt ride of you know, courses, to-do lists, too late towards a destination that it lacks equilibrium. According to an article, I think it was March of 2018, it tells this story of this college girl. She's quoted as saying, I was running myself literally thin, just trying to be a good college student. The story was told in an effort to express the increase in mental health treatment that's sought out by college students. We'll compound this in the arena of non-traditional students with shoulders already burdened by you know, jobs, responsibilities, families, leaves little scapula room for higher education. In fact, according to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, one in five U.S. adults will experience mental illness each year. So if we were all in a room together tonight, you know, I could look two to my left and two to my right, and one of us would be affected. Since this pandemic has hit, that number has increased by 30%. In fact, all lifetime mental illness, 50% of it actually starts by the age of 14, 75% by the age of 24. This leads to suicide becoming the second leading cause of death, second leading cause of death among people ages 10 to 34. So what is it? 
this link of attrition rates in universities, burnout rates in corporate America, mental illness on the rise. It's this idea that you know the path doesn't matter. Only destination, void of homeostasis, that value and worth are defined by you know shorter timelines and specific statuses. Just stay the course, regardless if that course is really even truly our destiny. You know, the thirst to climb this ladder, it's literally dehydrating our mental capacities. So with the normal rigor of American life, right? We've got fast pace, you know, quick fixes, this hurried sense to become competitive. When this pandemic hit, it was that forced pause. You know, our once vice of going way too fast has now all of a sudden become this vice of going way too slow. But we can use this pause. If we can find that balance, it will enable us to maybe stay afloat or take a leap in another direction. You know, Aristotle's theory has played an integral role in the direction of my career in academia, medicine, my family, and my own mental health. I'm still in pursuit, but I have clarity and balance. Does it look the way I thought it was supposed to look? No. Has it been easy? No. But is it sustainable? Yes. And am I happy? Yes. And that's the point. Finally graduating in May with honors from KU, I've been accepted to medical school, which I'll be starting in the fall. I am forever grateful to my acquaintance and to history as they quickly revealed, you know, my happiness as a future physician would really only truly be incorporated if it was harnessed between my vice of success and failure, of excess and deficiency. True success, it exists in the peace with the ability to recognize our vices, to identify those thresholds, to say no, not yet, or it's not too late. So may my fellow and who knows future students, faculty, coworkers, and audience be privy to this theory. Let's use this pause, embark on a new endeavor, but we have to enjoy the journey. We have to find balance. And may you all find the strength to live between your vices. Thank you.